everyone, it's Michael. Today's video is going to be about a concept that has long stressed me out, um, and it'll actually become a part of a three video series. So today's video will focus on pH, the next video will focus on TDS, or total dissolved solids, and the last video will focus on the basic differences between water types, meaning reverse osmosis, tap water, filtered water, rainwater, distilled water. Um, I really wanted to present all three of those concepts together because they are so um, interrelated, they are so mutually informed, but what I learned from doing my own research on these topics is that each one is overwhelming in and of itself. So I wanted to take it step by step um, and really segue into a greater understanding. I wish somebody had done that for me because when I first started looking at literature on the topics, um, it was like hoots and clicks. It took a long time for it really to settle in and for me to understand what all of it meant. Um, so again, I will be presenting a very basic understanding of things. Um, if you would like some more complex or higher level um, analysis or literature, I would encourage you to do your own research. And if you find anything remarkable, please leave it in the comment section below. That is always a resource to you guys, and I encourage you to be mutually supportive and share information. Um, I did take some notes to keep myself on track. Um, so, let's just go ahead and jump in. pH is a numeric figure that expresses the acidity or the alkalinity of a substance, with 7 being represented as neutral, meaning neither basic nor acidic. So, in nature, rainwater is acidic and its pH figures can range anywhere from 5 up to 6.8. So, the objective here is to provide orchids with a similar water quality that they're receiving in the wild. And Across orchid literature, across um, all of the resources that are available, the predominant understanding is that the sweet spot or your general target zone is going to be 5.5 to 6.5, meaning slightly acidic. So why does pH matter? Well, pH has a huge impact on nutrient availability. So think of water as your delivery vessel. If your pH isn't in the target zone, none of the passengers are going to get where they're going. So the nutrients will not be available. For example, phosphorus is unavailable from 7 to 8.5 on that scale. Manganese is primarily available only between 4 to 5.5. So you could be putting together the most remarkable, perfect fertilizer cocktail for your plants, but if the pH isn't in line, it's never going to get there. And beyond that, the salts in your fertilizer are probably going to start to build up and then poison the plant. So that's something that's really interesting to know. If, there is, uh, if the pH is too high, none of the nutrients will be absorbed. If the pH is too low, the nutrients are too readily available and toxicity issues can begin to occur. So that being said, you alter the pH of water when you add anything else. So fertilizer, super thrive, anything that you're putting into that water is going to, it's going to impact the pH of the water. So for example, you may have you're taking it straight out of the tap, you have a pH of 7.4, and then you add your fertilizer. Well, fertilizer is, for the most part, inherently acidic. So that's going to drop the acidity, possibly down to the target zone, and suddenly you're at 6.2, and you're in, you're in the sweet spot. So when you are aiming for that target zone, bear in mind that you're aiming for the target zone um, once everything has been added to the water. That's not your starting point. So, um... You know, I'm going to put my notes to the side. All of this is fine and speculation. All of this is, is fine in theory, but let's get the research up on its feet. Um, I recently invested in a pH monitor or meter. Um, so I'm going to take you through the process of how to use that tool to kind of assess what you're doing with your orchids and find out if you're in the target zone. So from left to right, what you're looking at is a cup of room temperature tap water taken directly from my faucet. The second cup you're looking at is a cup of Brita purified water. And the third jar you're looking at is actually that same Brita purified water with my Grow More Orchid food mixed in and fully incorporated. So as I mentioned earlier, I did purchase this pH monitor. And the first thing I would encourage you to do when you get it is calibrate it. It would be a real shame if you completely modified all of your growing and watering methodologies based off of some inaccurate numbers. So just do your due diligence, make sure that you're getting the proper measurements. So let's go ahead, we'll remove the cap and turn the unit on. It should register with a zero, or a one, I'm sorry. Um, and so let's go ahead and start off by putting it into the tap water. You have to wiggle it a bit just to make sure it's getting an accurate reading of everything throughout the cup, and then we'll see what it says. So I don't know if you can see it, but it is giving me a reading of 7.6. That's higher than our target, which is, again, 5.5 to 6.5. 
So let's go ahead and remove this. We'll shake it off, we'll give it a quick dry, and then we're gonna try again, this time with the Brita water. So we'll wait till it goes back to one, there it is. Put it in our water and we're gonna give it a quick wiggle. Uh-oh, what is this gonna tell us? So, can you see it? That brought us down to 6.9, which is better and closer to our target range, but still not quite perfect. But it does tell us that the Brita was effective at reducing the pH a little bit of the water. So we're at 6.8. Let's go ahead and shake that off and give it another dry. So in our grand finale, we will go ahead and test the fertilized water itself. Now remember, fertilizer is acidic by its nature. So wait till it goes back to one. There you are. And let's pop it in. I hope you guys can see this. And ooh, look at it go. And the final read is, I hope you guys can see it, it's 6.2. So that is comfortably in our target zone. So this is what's going to help you make informed decisions. This is gonna help you decide whether you need to reassess what your water supply is. But um, this is just a really great way to validate that you're giving your orchids um, nutrients and water in a way that they can receive it. I realize that this process isn't the most fun, but we spend so much time obsessing over our little green babies that it would be a real shame that if you were doing every single thing right, but you're using tap water and the pH just isn't right and it's, you know, your orchids just can't possibly thrive. So um, thank you so much, as always, for spending your time with me. If you have any questions or concerns or resources or insights you want to share, please use the comment section below. Um, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, um, and Let's keep the dialogue going, guys. I so appreciate you spending your time with me, and um, stay tuned for the TDS video. I am just so thrilled to break that down for you. <laughs> Have a great night, guys. Bye.